Hey everyone, welcome to today's video. Welcome to the Gamey Daddy channel. So today we're going to be talking about something that we most likely believe is now starting to become an issue with the Division 2. Now there might be many different factors involved in this. Um, this is not something that I'm trying to dismiss, if anything. Uh, I'll probably be the first to highlight these issues when it comes to game development, having to deal with a corporate body that basically has ways that things are done, uh, you know, in a way that, in my opinion, is somewhat, uh, in a sense, wasteful. But, you know, I don't own a multi-billion dollar corporation, so nobody asked my opinion on those matters. Nonetheless, though, I'll talk about it from the side of a gamer and a content creator. Because I believe that, you know, however the community here perceives it, that so-called corporate mandate will be affected regardless if they do not play the cards right in order for them to be able to leverage the very best, I would say, momentum from their community. Because that momentum translates into financial, you know, dollars for them or euros or whatever it is. And I think the one issue here that I want to discuss in today's video is not necessarily just, uh, you know, poor communication, but also a lack of clear communication. Now, I'm saying this because not only has this basically been an issue, uh, it's been a recurring theme uh, as we've seen in the Division game. Now, yes, usually on the back end, they come back and clarify these issues and, you know, tell everybody, well, you know, this is what we meant or they, in a case, sometimes ignore these issues and move on like nothing basically, you know, has happened. Now, one of these issues that I wanted to highlight in this particular video was the Division you know, um, I would say the creative director coming out at the E3 reveal of this game and basically, you know, uh, talking about all what we were going to be expecting once the game was released. They talk about year one content being free. Um, that was actually the case, but they didn't necessarily talk much about what the year one content will be and they didn't necessarily flesh it out. And what I mean by that is when they were talking about year one content, they actually mentioned exactly what we got. They talked about the end game specializations and they also talked about, you know, end game activities that basically were going to span the first year content. But then they made a very weird addition to everything by adding these weird classified missions that. After saying that something was free, they then made available another set of missions available to, you know, basically a select set of people. Now, that's where some problems started to, you know, creep up and come in. And whenever players see something that has not been necessarily classified uh, as a clear picture, they start to get suspicious. Not only that, they said, and I remember there's an interview that Julian Garrity said that every single activity will be played, will be playable, uh, you know, by solo players. And they also said matchmaking will be available for other activities. There was a post that somebody put a tweet, uh, you know, about, and these things were actually, you know, in a sense confirmed. Now, they said all that stuff, but then we had eight player raids that did not have any matchmaking and could not be played solo. But guess what? In their communication, they actually clarified that the raids were going to be eight player raids. The only thing they didn't go ahead and clarify was the nature of how these raids would attain the players uh, and the nature at which they were designing for players to be able to pair up and do the activity. Now, yes, you can assume this, but when there, you know, there are a lot of mechanics that go with your game, it is required that you at least try your best to be as open and as transparent as possible. These are the tenets that allowed for the first game to be successful, even though when it launched, it was in a worse state than the Division 2. I know some people may push back and tell me how awesome the Division 1 was. Whatever. I played the same game we all played. The only reason we played the Division 1 was, you know, because we enjoyed the game and we had never necessarily experienced much like it. But as the broader gaming community, the Division 1 was not a solid entry. It basically tanked in Metacritic reviews. It tanked in even the popular reviews. ACG actually recommended that you buy the Division 1 on a sale. That's pretty much what it was. Now, look at the Division 2, on the other hand, when it launched, it launched in a better state. The problem was they did not communicate things clearly, and so players were getting all kinds of mixed signals. In fact, while they were backtracking, they did not even clarify some of the things that they backtracked for. Example being when they said those who had some of the better additions were going to be getting more stash size. I remember making a video saying that that was actually not a wise choice, and so they backtracked and didn't they necessarily didn't clarify for others saying that, okay, you know, we're moving back on this, you know, situation. And then they, 
basically did not even say, okay, instead we're going to do something like this. I don't remember seeing anything like that. And I think this little habit has creeped its way even till now where we're looking forward to more content. They've made some, you know, uh, I would say announcements. This is when they made that announcement saying, you know, you guys, you know, probably thought that, you know, season f uh, four was going to be the end of the division. But, you know, we are getting more content over and over, you know, over to you guys very soon. We're early at work on it. And then they also got some details, uh, you know, basically, uh, you know, uh, I would say they got some details basically presented to us that didn't necessarily appeal to a lot of the community because we had already gotten uh, most of our news from the earnings call. Now we're in March 3rd. And I think again, this same culture of poor and unclear communication is starting to creep in again. There has been no word from the developers. There has been no word from the PR team. And so far it's starting to weigh in on the community participation. Now, why I say this is not necessarily because the division community basically just wants somebody to say something. No, the division community is a very unique community. You see, the demographics of players that do play this game is kind of very different from, you know, most of the other demographics of other games out there. And I think that's where the developers pretty much, you know, in a sense, uh, sometimes miss out on how they actually lay down their communication because they're not necessarily looking at their demographics and they're not necessarily treating that demographics how they're supposed to be treated in terms of this serious agenda or serious business. And when I mean the demographics of the division, I'm talking about our player base being basically the youngest age range around the 25 year age range. But I would say the mid range and the most demographics are from the age of 35 through about 42 and then even much older. At this rate, people, you know, in this frame of mind and in this time do not have time for a lot of nonsense. In fact, their fuse and patience for, you know, lackluster is very, very short. And I think the developers ought to, at this point, start getting their cards in order and at least pushing for a way to reach out to the community much more frequently, uh, you know, talking about issues that are pressing and that issue that's pressing more than anything are the issues of what to look forward to and what to expect. I think this is pretty much what I think the community right now is looking forward to. And I think it's not just a matter of keeping the community in uh, you know, the loop. I think now it's a matter of respect. You see, it's one thing to appreciate your community of gamers. It's one thing to tell them, thank you very much. It's another thing to show actions that prove it. And I can also understand, too, that many of these decisions are not solely the developer's fault. If you guys remember, we were not going to hear anything about so-called division content if the investors in that earnings call did not ask a question about the division, too. We were not going to hear anything about it. And I think this may be a corporate issue. You know, it's one thing to say a corporate issue. You know, you can just call an entity that is basically lifeless that, you know, people making the decisions can hide behind. But I would say we take it to the top and hold accountable basically on our conversations. Those who are actually calling the shots for these particular issues. And I think they are the ones that are more than likely you know, basically directing how the communication between the community and the developers pretty much go. I don't think the developers can say anything that they're not allowed to say. Um, you know, I'm not like I don't think I'm certain that they cannot say things that they're not allowed to say, you know. And so this is probably where we have a stalemate. We're dealing with, you know, a corporate entity that, you know, basically has really talented developers, uh, you know, that in many cases, the developers would be very excited and happy to speak about the things that are going on. But, you know, nobody, you know, can vouch for them if they do something like that. They may be at risk of losing their jobs. You also have people who basically are running their companies like it was when they first started and have not necessarily fully bought into the very new aspect of doing things. You see, I think the division one was Ubisoft mass, uh, you know, Ubisoft's exposure to what a community could basically be like all of the issues and all of the stresses and all of the, the wins and all of the, uh, you know, uh, celebrations that come with opening yourself up to a community. These are things that some studios have basically been doing for a long time and are very seasoned, you know, in. 
I think Massive Ubisoft is still, in my opinion, a toddler at this. And so this is what we're seeing right now. I mean, you know, if this was a much more seasoned studio, you know, I mean, if this was a studio that has been doing this for a much longer period of time, I genuinely believe that we would basically have gotten some news. And the truth is there are very few studios that actually have the expertise or at least the comfort level to do stuff like this in the industry. So it's very interesting right now that where we are, you have all of these players in the mix and we're not getting any news. And in my opinion, I feel it's moved from the level of being, okay, we're being held back by corporate mandates and not being certain of what we're doing or we want to surprise the community to an aspect of how do we see our community? Do we respect our community of players? And I believe most of the developers do. I just think their hands are really tied. I think the corporate you know, bodies and the, the people who are holding all the cards and making the decisions are ideally, you know, pretty much holding back, uh, you know, the the floodgates of the information that we could get that will prepare us and keep us in a, you know, in a valid spot. But here is my understanding. Here's my take. I know many of you are probably saying, you know, we're not hearing any news and all of that. But one thing I do understand and I do know from trends and patterns from Massive Ubisoft is they usually make their big announcements at the tail end of other big releases or news about other games. And you guys know that Outriders is set to release on April 1st. Now it's March. We haven't heard anything because there's not a lot of buzz in the air. If the developers announce something, perhaps there might be some news, but it may go ahead and die down around that time. But what if right before Outriders comes out, the developers basically drop a trailer? I can almost bet you 25 cents that this is something that I think might happen because they do it all the time. Massive will announce new stuff, maybe even I can almost say a PTS around that same season so that players can start testing out new gear, maybe new weapons before they come out. And then we have a, you know, kind of like the next direction of where to go. I think this is probably what they're gunning for because at the time Outriders release is going to be coming forth, there's going to be some news, there's going to be some buzz, there's going to be some, you know, uh, circulation of press. And I think this is what they want to harp on. But I definitely genuinely think that even before then, there has to be, in my opinion, some level of communication, be it minimal, be it big or be it small, whatever it is, that basically addresses the community and says, hey, we're coming. We have you guys in mind. Uh, it doesn't have to be anything fancy, just something straightforward. These are my opinions about this matter. I don't know how anybody else feels about this, uh, but let me hear your thoughts in the comment section. Um, thank you very much for your time and audience. Hopefully we'll talk soon. Peace out.